If I had to describe Jedi Survivor in one sentence, it would be a diamond in the rough. Considering Respawn took every concern I had with the first game and not only addressed it, but went above and beyond to add serious depth and unfortunately come up short of the finish line based solely on the absolutely dismal performance. Our story is set in a galaxy far, far away, but this game is far, far from being in a playable state, which is disappointing, especially when coming from a AAA studio. This is the reoccurring sin of modern gaming, putting out a product that just simply is not ready, and I will not recommend any games that don't get that right at a base level of production. It's quite unfortunate, and I really am disappointed that such a well-crafted game can be undone by poor optimization, but it is what it is. In all honesty, I actually struggled to finish Jedi Survivor. The frame rate and especially the screen tearing every few seconds nearly ruined any immersion or fun and greatly took away from all my objectives. So without further ado, here's my take on the experience. For starters, the story of Jedi Survivor was much more compelling to me than its previous entry. As you once again jump into the space boots of Cal Kestis as a now much more mature and veteran warrior of countless battles. We are several years into Cal's ongoing battle with the Empire as he aims to disrupt and sabotage them in any way he can, while also trying to restore parts of the Jedi Order and its legacy, teachings, and way of life. In this vein, Cal is definitely more confident than in the prior game, but not overly so, which altogether make him a quite likable character who feels very human and relatable. Also, there's definitely a much stronger sense of connection with Cal and all of his companions you meet along the way to include Grease, Seer, Marin, and a new entry to the main cast in Bo de Kuna. This does lead to more emotional and heartfelt situations that are more captivating than the previous entry. In typical Star Wars fashion, one mission leads to another as new information is revealed, and Cal and the team are back in action, although now you will be joined by characters in certain missions, which is a very welcome addition. The villains are great and feel just as motivated in their goals against Cal, outside of just being evil for the sake of being evil. There are also several more boss and mini boss battles this go round, as their movesets are also more varied, which is always welcomed, to include phases similar to Souls games. As an early note, I did play Jedi Survivor on a PS5 in performance mode. The game itself actually looks great as long as you are standing still, inside corridors or rooms, or in areas with little to no draw distance. The zones this go round are huge, and Respawn really fleshed out the amount of detail surrounding you. The draw distance here is much greater, so I feel like this is where some of the frame rate issues come from, as you can really see much further than before. The textures are detailed and really enhance the look of everything you can see and come in contact with. I actually think the team was very ambitious in how much painstaking detail has actually been added. Crystals protrude from rocks, ships, crews, invisible lanes in the city, animals roam the open land, water falls over the edge of a cliff, magic platforms pulse under your feet, and much more. Most items and environments are designed with purpose, feeling way more fleshed out and intentional, and the set pieces are incredible. The scale in this game is really off the charts, as at times you can feel like a speck of salt in an ocean, engulfed by your surroundings. Unfortunately, the visuals are constantly under pressure, as it was very difficult to play through Jedi Survivor due to all the visual impairments that were consistently ruining the experience. There was constant screen tearing anytime I would pan the camera in any direction, especially when done quickly. This was present through my entire playthrough and was impossible to ignore. Pop-in was consistent even in cutscenes, mostly in the environments and backgrounds and characters would clip through the floor and environment as well. My cape a few times just went ape shit and got the shivers and shakes and just went all over the place. The frame rate hovered around 50 frames a second, if I had to guess, most of the time would drop slower in big moments. I could really feel the difference from 45 to 50 frames per second here and 60 frames per second in other titles. It really is a massive difference. Also, I was playing the last quarter of the game with the week one patch released on March 3rd. And while this did improve performance, it was only slightly. I really don't think anyone should have to wait a week to play a game in an optimized state that you already paid $70 for and should have shipped ready in the first place. Looking past this, mechanically, Jedi Survivor is really a fantastic power fantasy, letting you expand even further into the Jedi mythos. In the past game, I wanted to see improved specializations into different lightsaber stances, and now not only can you choose from many different stances to include dual wield and dual sided lightsabers, you can specialize into each stance with the skill tree to really emphasize playstyle and feel. The combat is great and has both quick and agile moves that let you cut in and out of enemies, while also having slower, weighty moves that have greater impact and allow you to bully combatants. 
There is essentially a play style for nearly every occasion, and you will be able to utilize two styles at any given time, with the ability to change them at meditation circles, which are areas on the map to rest and spend skill points. Each stance has skill points that are able to be spent in a skill tree, and you get those from defeating enemies and completing missions to gain new abilities, but unfortunately, I never really felt like they added as much depth or new movesets as I would have liked to see. They mostly tacked on an extra attack and an action string or occasionally added a new move altogether. Your weapon and stance moveset remain mostly consistent to what you start with overall, which isn't a bad thing as the stances have plenty of moves on their own. Now you also have access to a telekinesis tree that does make you feel much more powerful and adds some completely new moves and increases your learned abilities even more. Here I felt the greatest impact to my skill point decisions as far as combat improvements go because the result was more impactful to enemies and visually noticeable. It was awesome to force slam enemies into the earth and see the pressure keeping them pinned, allowing you to maneuver away or attack unrestrained. Mind control was a ton of fun and probably the force ability I used the most, turning enemies into allies. Enemy AI was much improved for me and although there were still an occasional hiccup, it seems much better than in Fallen Order. Motion capture was on point for a majority of actions and is more noticeable, now that platforming is center stage and feels more organic than tacked on. The environments and areas feel way more fleshed out and the paths of travel make sense, especially for as long as you are now expected to maneuver different obstacles. These zones can take a serious chunk of time to navigate and are outright massive in most cases. So be prepared to spend much of your time navigating to get to your final destination. The creativity on display when navigating the terrain is quite impressive and great care has gone into make each movement matter and make sense. I actually had a great deal of fun in most cases, although a few were just slightly more long-winded than I would have liked. There is now home base of sorts to visit in between missions, as you can find wanderers and essentially build up a hub by sending them back to help out or partake in side quests. The side quests are good addition and require you to investigate rumors or track down missing people. You can even engage in bounties and hunt down baddies mercenary style. There are many goofy and wacky characters that are both charming and funny, and of course creative and visually interesting. It's a breath of fresh air to see so many unique NPCs in Jedi Survivor, as the different characters of Star Wars are one of its best features. You can now ride mounts to get around quicker, as the environments are massive and not so narrow and blocked off as before. You can really explore these large zones and spend much of your time in roaming. There are different currencies you can find by exploring that give you access to custom looks and unique colors for your gear. Again, the amount of extra content available here is great and makes the world feel alive and lived in. This was one of my concerns in the first game. It just felt so empty, but here you are constantly interacting with characters. Now you can actually do missions joined with a companion such as Bode or Marin, as they will actually be needed to help you access different areas for progression. You can even call out for them to attack certain enemies as well. This feels more in line with the movies, as they are always loaded with teamwork and missions with many members at once, which is where the excitement and fun usually come in. There are many voice lines when working with the teammate, and I'm happy to say the voice acting is very well done. Nice work, Jedi. You too, Desert Ghost. There wasn't one character that seemed out of place or sounded like the lines were phoned in. The quality was present all the way through, including the NPCs. I owe you nothing! Jedi! Speaking of sound, it's fantastic, as Star Wars is known for its incredible score and unique audio signature. The music helps build tension and the blaster and saber effects are crunchy and satisfying. So this game has so much to offer if they can fix the performance issues in a timely manner. I really do think that in its current state, it's not worth the money spent and there are other games to play in its stead, which really is a bummer. Jedi Survivor is actually a blast to play with massive set pieces, cinematic gameplay, and unique characters. But all of this is overshadowed by technical problems that hold this back from possibly being the greatest Star Wars action game of all time. So feel free to comment on what you think of Jedi Survivor. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the review. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Get ready to die! Ah!